Ladies and gentlemen, online viewers worldwide, welcome to the 2020 Tang Prize Laureate Lecture in Rule of Law. The 2020 Tang Prize in Rule of Law is shared by three non-governmental organizations. They work in different areas of the world but share the virtues of achieving tremendous achievements in promoting the rule of law where it faces severe challenges. Today, we're honored to invite the three laureates to share their experiences. May I now invite Dr. Ye Junrong, Chair of the Tang Prize Selection Committee for Rule of Law, to introduce the 2020 Tang Prize Laureate in Rule of Law. Dr. Ye, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2020 Tang Prize in Rule of Law is special in that it was jointly awarded to three international non-governmental organizations. Each of them has made remarkable efforts in advancing the rule of law in their respective societies, overcoming the challenges unique in their surroundings. One common approach shared by all three organizations is strategic litigation, that is, instituting legal proceedings aiming at acquiring rulings of the court so as to bring about progressive changes. That is the common theme in this series of laureates lecture. Each organization has its own reason in resorting to the court, and their practice produces valuable lesson for the development in the study of law. In the case of Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association, the most pressing issue is environmental degradation. Bangladesh, of course, is best too with sensitive geographical conditions and many problems were aided by industrial development and pollution. Those are often overlooked by, long, by government and regulators. What are the available means for an NGO that cares about the well-being of the population and fights for environmental justice? Bella has extensive used public interest litigation and has successfully persuaded the court to accept that a public interest group can represent the people in asking developers to respect their rights. How did Bella achieve those breakthroughs? How did Bella overcome the legal and practical obstacles? We are very happy to have Sieda Rizwana Hassan, the chief executive of Bella, who will share the experiences of Bella for us. The title of her lecture is The Impact of Public Interest Litigation. Let's welcome Rizwana. Hello, this is Advocate Rizwana from Bangladesh. I work for Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association. I'll be um, telling you about uh, some of the impacts of our work in Bangladesh. And I'll actually confine myself to the impacts of public interest litigation, which is a, a kind of litigation, a kind of legal cases. Uh, that are filed to protect the interests of a larger section of the of the society. Before I start talking about public interest litigation and some of the cases we have filed and the impacts of these cases, I would just like to share with you very briefly some pertinent facts about Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh is one of the most populated countries of the world. In uh, terms of environmental performance, we ranked 162 out of 180 countries in the year uh, 2020, but our rank was 179 both in 2018 and 2019. In terms of rule of law, the position of Bangladesh is 115 out of 156 countries. Our air is one of the worst polluted in the world. We have the world's fifth most polluted river here in Bangladesh. Uh, the world's fifth most polluted industry is also located here in Bangladesh. Forest depletion in Bangladesh is double the global average. So if the global average of deforestation is 1.3, our rate of deforestation is 2.6. 79% uh, of our agricultural land lacks nutrient and the capital of Bangladesh, Dhaka, is one of the worst livable cities of the world. Now that should tell you why uh, we need activism here in Bangladesh to defend people's environmental justice. Uh, there are other uh, worrying facts that I want to share with you very briefly. Well, Among the countries of the world that uh, remain most vulnerable to climatic risks, Bangladesh ranks 7. Uh, if climate change happens the way it is being feared, 
and sea level rises just by one meter. One third of this overpopulated country we have to go underwater. And with the disappearance of our coastal districts, uh, the people of Bangladesh will be forced to redraw their map. And this very small country, which is already overpopulated, will have to accommodate the people of 21 district, uh, 21 coastal districts into the remaining part of the country. Environment has a very uh, unique meaning to the people of Bangladesh. 16% uh, of the people of Bangladesh get their only animal protein intake from the river fishes. Agriculture plays a very uh, major role in the GDP. It still employs around uh, 30 to 35% of our population. Uh, 1.2 million people directly depend on the forest ecology that we have. And I've shared with you at the beginning that deforestation rate in Bangladesh is actually very high. Despite the massive environment degradation that we have in the country, the people of Bangladesh still produces their staple. Uh, so for the fisher folk, the forest dependent people, the farmers, environmental justice really matters. And the fisher folk, the farmers and the forest dependent people constitute the majority of the population of Bangladesh. Environmental justice does not have a globally defined definition and each country uh, defines uh, the notion according to its own needs and its own movements and uh, campaigns and challenges. Uh, but there are certain uh, parameters that have been globally accepted as parameters of environmental justice. One such principle remains meaningful participation of people in the decision-making process. And, and the other test is the burden. So if there is development happening somewhere, it the benefit of it should be equally, equitably and fairly distributed and no particular segment of the population should be bearing any disproportionate burden of what is continuing in the name of development. I would say that in terms of our conflict, uh, the conflict of the environmental justice advocates with the ongoing narrative of development uh, would tell us that people here in Bangladesh are not having meaningful participation in the decision making process and there are communities, uh, there are uh, localities who are bearing disproportionate burden of various development activities. Uh, young lawyers, uh, progressive segments of the population are constantly challenging the development narratives that have been imposed on the people by the government. And in doing so, we rely heavily on the higher judiciary of the country. We move to the Supreme Court of Bangladesh with environmental cases whenever there is violation of substantive principles and provisions of the laws, as well as procedural aspects of the laws that we have in hand. So the so basis of our litigation remain constitution, which is the highest law of the country, and um, different sectoral laws. We do have specific law that deals with environment, but we also have other laws in the areas of agriculture, biodiversity conservation, forest protection, fishery protection, protection of agricultural land, regulation of pesticide, mining, uh, management of waste. And I would argue that all of these laws actually form the environmental legal regime for any civilized nation, and Bangladesh is no exception to this. So we rely on our constitution, we rely on the, um, on the legal regime, and we also uh, draw forces from uh, international conventions that Bangladesh has ratified. We move our cases before the higher judiciary under Article 1 and 2 of our constitution that um, empowers citizens to challenge the actions or inactions of the government. Uh, whenever we file public interest litigation on environmental matters, mostly uh, with the Supreme Court of Bangladesh, and in doing so, we rely on Article 1. Article 1 or 2 of the constitution allows the citizens to move cases before the Supreme Court whenever their fundamental right is violated. Now, the Constitution of Bangladesh does not expressly recognize environment as a fundamental right, but it recognizes right to life. And we have managed to successfully argue before the court and establish the fact that right to life becomes meaningless without enjoyment of right to environment. If enjoyment of your right to environment is denied, that would affect your right to life. So it was a Bela case that managed to get a broader interpretation of the constitutionally recognized right to life to be broad enough to include right to environment. Uh, the constitution of Bangladesh requires that a litigant has to be an aggrieved person to file the case. In the cases that we take before the court, we are not the persons who are directly affected. Uh, 
but it is a constitutional requirement that you have to be aggrieved. So we had to argue very forcefully that yes, when we are protecting public property, when we are working to uphold public interest that the constitution requires us to do, and then anything wrong happens against the protection needs of the public property, or any public injury is caused, and the people who are suffering the brunt of it are not in a position to approach the court for various social, cultural, political reasons, then we, because of our activism in the particular area, have actually gained the right to represent these peoples, to represent the protection need of the environmental resources, and file petition before the Supreme Court. So the constitutional requirement of a grief person still remains there. But the broad interpretation that has been given by our higher judiciary has allowed organizations like us to file cases whenever the river is contaminated, whenever the forest is being depleted, whenever uh, excessive pesticide is being put on agricultural land affecting the fertility of the agricultural land, whenever hill is being raised, and all these are affecting communities, are affecting societies. The court has actually broadened the scope of right to uh, file cases on the ground that if citizens groups like ours that are fighting for the protection of environment are not given the uh, right to file cases when law is violated in the respective areas, then these citizens group will actually be discouraged to perform their public duties for protection of environment. So two major victories. One, getting a broader interpretation of the constitutionally recognized right to life to include right to environment, then the other one to get a broader interpretation, a more progressive interpretation of the constitutional requirement of person aggrieved uh, to file a case. So since inception thus far, we have filed around 370 public interest cases covering various environmental issues, uh, vehicular pollution, air pollution, river pollution, water pollution, industrial pollution, uh, noise pollution. We have moved petitions before the Supreme Court asking for uh, protection of agricultural land. For we have moved, we have filed petition before the Supreme Court of Bangladesh on behalf of the communities whose agricultural lands, whose fertile agricultural lands, were forcibly grabbed by powerful elites to to build up industry there, or to have housing estate there, or to have economic zone there, or to uh, cultivate saline water shrimp there. We have represented the farmers, we have represented the fishermen, we have represented the forest traders and their interests through filing public interest litigation before the, uh, before the upper court. Uh, we have moved petition on behalf of the communities who are suffering from water scarcity because uh, some water intensive industries were actually extracting groundwater which led to depletion of the aquifer which in turn led to uh, drying out of tubers being used by the communities. So in that case, we have actually advocated for recognition of water rights of the communities. We have uh, we have challenged unregulated urbanization. This has created tension between us and the mighty realtors. We have got landmark judgments uh, that have directed uh, realtors to remove sands that were dumped on wet, that were that were dumped on wetland and fertile agricultural land for developing townships. We have uh, very successfully filed cases against destructive sand mining in our rivers, stone extraction from uh, hilly streams and rivers, uh, unregulated uh, destructive uh, gas mining leading to fires. Uh, we, have, uh, we have also filed cases against other destructive commercial ventures such as cultivation of shrimp in, uh, in saline water without having any environmental or social impact assessment. We have, we have challenged the entire shipwrecking industry in Bangladesh because this industry is operating in violation of national laws, in violation of international laws, and it is actually not an industry, but dumping of waste in disguise. Uh, we have uh, filed petition before the court asking for protection of some specific species that are critically endangered and are faced with the threat of extinction. It is in a Bela case that the Supreme Court directed the relocation of the world's fifth most polluted industry from a residential area to a plant industry area. I'm talking about the tannery industry here. Uh, in another case where Bela was also a 
pro uh, petition or plaintiff, however you call it, the court has directed formation of National River Protection Commission and has given the government detailed direction as to how to protect the four major rivers flowing through the capital of Bangladesh from indiscriminate encroachment. Uh, and in doing so, the court has actually upheld the principle of sustainable development. And it has said that whenever there is a conflict between environment and development, and there is no straitjacket formula to reach to a conclusion, then environment should be given the priority over development because the resources that we have in our hands are not resources to be exhausted in just one generation. We have to protect this for the future generation. Uh, because of a Bela case, the High Court directed the Canadian mining company NICO to compensate the government of Bangladesh because the reckless and risky operation of this mining company actually led to successive fire blowouts in a particular gas mine of Bangladesh. The court directed the government to frame rules to regulate shipwrecking. The court, the court made it clear that the rules will have to be framed in line with the Basel Convention and have to ensure both labor protection and environmental safety. The direction of the court to close down the shipwrecking industry created huge impact both in Bangladesh and in the international area because the exporters of the vessels had to find a place where they could dump their vessels. On the other hand, the regulators here in Bangladesh were put under pressure to ensure that no vessel enters Bangladesh without first being pre-cleaned outside the territory of Bangladesh. Unfortunately, uh, the directives of the court uh, have not been fully complied with, the struggle is still continuing. In some cases, it is not necessarily Bela or a similar organization that is fighting the cases. Because of the sensation that we have managed to create around environmental justice, in some instances we see that the higher judiciary itself takes on the responsibility and issues show cause notices on the government on different environmental justice issues. One such instance remains the building that has that was constructed by the Bangladesh Garments Manufacturers and Exporters Association. This is the highest export earning uh, sector of the country. The BGMEA built up a multi-storied building right in the middle of an urban wetland. So the court, on the basis of a newspaper report, issued a Suomoto rule, which means a show cause notice that has been issued uh, on the motion of the court itself. And Bela actually assisted the court during the hearing process uh, by pointing to the different irregularities that were committed in constructing that building. Finally, the building was declared illegal and this particular case has actually um, somewhat put a regulation on the long-standing culture of impunity that few uh, corporations, uh, business houses, political powerhouses uh, were and are still continuing in Bangladesh. These litigations that have been filed have led to uh, major uh, legal breakthroughs. For example, the, court, the Supreme Court of Bangladesh remains the third Supreme Court of the world that has declared rivers as legal persons. The Supreme Court has said that if anything wrong happens to the, to the rivers, then those government agencies who are responsible for protecting the rivers will be held liable just as the company shareholders are uh, held liable in case anything bad happens to a company. The Supreme Court interventions um, are restraining the unregulated sand mining and stone extraction from our wetlands, uh, which in turn is actually giving back life to the river ecology. The, the higher judiciary has not only confined to uh, giving direction for the protection of the major rivers, rather the courts have come forward to regulate um, unchecked urbanization that were leading to filling up of the city canals. So 50 of the canals of the Dhaka city have been directed to be restored to their original position. The court has also directed that the government will not be allocating forest land for development purposes until and unless the court frames compensatory afforestation rules. The tendency here of late, the tendency here became allocating uh, the very little forest land that we have for different development purposes. The court came in and said no to such practices that would uh, take away even more forest land from people of money. The judiciary has also given the government detailed directions about how to restore a natural forest that is faced with extreme derivation. The, so the court has directed that the government has to form a high-powered committee and that high-powered committee will work with uh, necessary experts and draw an action plan 
for the regeneration, restoration of the degraded forest. That committee will also be looking into the rights of the forest dwelling communities and recommend to the government as to how to settle the rights of the forest dwelling communities in that particular forest. In addition to, in addition to issues that are purely national in nature, we have taken issues before the court where there are international dimensions. I've already talked about our case um, against the shipbreaking industry or the shrimp industry. Uh, in two recent cases of Bela, we have actually challenged the uh, use of single-use plastics and uh, the use of a particular pesticide called Roundup, which uses an extremely uh, toxic element called glyphosate. So in these cases, it is not only the failure of the national actors, it is also the ploy uh, when the international players are also involved. Uh, and it is not only the market of Bangladesh that can keep itself free from plastics, provided um, global, provided there are not enough measures at the global level around the same. We are also take up local issues before the court. We represent the local communities. We take up national issues before the court when the interests of the whole country is involved. We also take up issues before the court that have international dimensions or international players involved in them. Because of the persistent efforts of Bela in filing public interest litigation in environmental matters, we have seen how the constitution is being broadly interpreted, how rights are being broadly interpreted to recognize citizens' right to environment. Because of the cases filed by Bela and um, other organizations, the constitutional commitment for protection of environment is being upheld. Court is giving direction on the executive and the executive are bound to comply with the directives of the court. This is making the executive branch of the government also responsive to people's demand for a sound environment. The cases whether the courts are encouraging performance of public duties by the citizens, it, uh, they are at the same time forcing the executive to perform their statutory obligation. Cases whether they are born or they are lost have an impact in creating public awareness around a given environmental issues. Sometimes even after losing a legal battle in the court, you see the government becoming shaky in implementing a disputed development project. This is because the filing of the uh, case created a sensation in the society and it's not easy for the government to just simply overrule or ignore public concerns around the same. Uh, the public interest litigations are facilitating implementations of the laws. The public interest litigations are leading to not only judgments but justice. And sometimes the directions of the courts are so elaborate that it's not only a judgment that you get, it's not also a justice that you get, you get complete justice. Uh, it is very, public interest litigation as a tool is very empowering for the communities, very empowering for the general people. When the general people uh, fail to convince the government, when the weaker segment of the population do not get the protection, needed protection from the other agencies of the government, they can still uh, look up to the, to the court and register their protest there. Thus far, the higher judiciary of Bangladesh has not um, frustrated us. Rather, the higher judiciary of Bangladesh has been very supportive to the cause of environmental justice. Yes, yes, there are challenges. Yes, there are frustrations. But if you consider the number of victories and weigh them against the number of losses, I would say that the number of uh, victories far outweigh the number of losses. The interventions from the higher court of Bangladesh through public interest litigations have actually managed to strike a balance between um, between development pursuit and um, the demands for environmental justice. So, and, and in doing so, the principles of sustainable development, the principles of intergenerational equity have been upheld. In delivering justice to people, the courts in the public interest litigations have actually fashioned many new strategies. The courts have directed a formation of committees by the, by the government and in these committees it is not only the public statutory actors who are made members, uh, the committees also comprise of sectoral experts. They also take affected committee members um, in, 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 in the committees and in the process the final decision becomes somewhat inclusive. The court has directed framing of rules, the court has directed uh, setting up of institutions, the, court, the courts have directed the government to bring uh, certain fragile vulnerable ecosystems under special protection and management regime, we call them environment, ecologically critical area. The public interest litigations and the resultant judgments have actually led to a change in the status quo. It is not easy for any government agency 
or any corporation to now think that whatever they want to do in the name of development, uh, they'll be able to do it. They now know that they have higher tests to pass, and these tests are the, the tests that the various PIs put them to. Well, the journey has not been without challenges, as I see. Uh, we face challenges around implementation. There is lack of political will to get the judgments of the course implemented. Sometimes politics intervenes heavily in the way of justice. We feel that it is not only the national governments who are creating obstacles on the way of people getting environmental justice. There are multinational corporations, there are governments of foreign countries who want a particular industry or particular economic activity to uh, continue uh, in the same way. For example, uh, the shipbreaking industry, the Western countries would not like Bangladesh to close its borders for their vessels. So they would like to legalize this dirty industry uh, by greenwashing them. It is important that organizations like Vela actually team up with uh, organizations in different countries of the world so that these challenges of globalization, these challenges of neoliberalism can be successfully resisted. The journey has not been smooth, as I say. The activists of Bela have been physically assaulted. Uh, the security of some of our family members have been put to stake, but we haven't given up. And we have no plan to give up because we are asking for justice. We are here to defend people's right to environment. We are speaking for those who can't speak. We will continue to mobilize communities. We will continue to resist destructive, arbitrary economic ventures, and we will ensure that there is a transformation towards an environmentally just society and an environmentally just world. Thank you, Ms. Hassan, for sharing valuable accomplishments as an active practitioner and advocate working in Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 2020 Tang Prize Laureate Lecture in Rule of Law. Please do join us in the other two sessions of the lecture series, which will also be posted on the Tang Prize channel. Thank you and goodbye.